Welcome back to Sinla Podcast. I'm still your host, Uchi Abadi, and I'm still with Dr. Badmos. We are talking about sleep disorders. We've talked, we've introduced it in the first episode, talked about parasomnias and how you can get support in the second episode. Now we are going to be talking about the relationship between um, sleep disorders and depression, like how can anxiety and depression impact on sleep? So please, Dr. Badmos, take this away. How can it impact on sleep? <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, there is a bilateral relationship between okay. mental health disorders and sleep. Mental health disorders can affect sleep. Sleep can affect mental health disorders. So let's start from mental health disorders affecting sleep. Okay. So what happens when people are depressed? They are down. Okay. Lack of energy, lack mm. of motivation. The morale is low. Yes. So we have the two sides of the divide in people with depression. Sometimes they find it difficult to sleep, and that is because they just don't find any meaning in life. Nothing comes interesting. Nothing is, nothing is worthwhile. Let me yes. put it that way. However, we also have situations where they sleep a lot. So we have people who are depressed having insomnia. We still have those who are depressed having um, hypersomnia. They sleep a lot. They gain a lot of okay. weight and all of okay. that. That is mainly because depression is the center stage. They are depressed. The mood is down. When the mood is down, there is no motivation. There's lack of energy. You binge at anything you see. Yes. Anything you see goes. And before you know it, the same person is obese. This person has something we call obstructive sleep apnea, another type of sleep disorder where, you know, commonly snoring. That's actually this, oh. the common name. Oh. Yes, people snore and in between the snoring, the breath goes off. They have this cessation of breath that it looks at, like the person is. And if somebody keeps having that, it actually affects the systolic blood pressure. The blood pressure okay. goes higher. Okay. Over time, this person would eventually develop hypertension. But that oh. is on one side. Oh. So now let's look at anxiety. What is happening with anxiety? People who are who are anxious, what happens to them? They are hyper vigilant. They are, they are aroused. Any little thing sets that cascade of fear, okay. you know, frights flight in them. Okay. So people with anxiety have difficulties staying asleep. Sometimes they wake up from bed and they are sweating, they are jittery, their heart is racing mm. very fast, their blood pressure goes up because of the anxiety in the background. Yeah. Anxiety is a concept, it's, it's actually a very broad spectrum. It goes from social phobia to post-traumatic stress disorder to anxiety disorder itself. There are a lot of, you know, issues on that anxiety. So people, naturally what happens is that that's your flight and fright hormone is higher in people who are anxious. Okay. And it is very important to note that when we say anxiety and when we say anxiety disorder, they mean two different things. Okay. So when we say sleep issues and sleep disorder, they mean different things. So when we say this sleep disorder, let me just quickly sh um, ship this in. We're talking about people who have issues with sleep, problem okay. with sleep, for at least three times in a week, lasting for more than three months. Hmm. So in these people, beyond that, it affects their routine. Yes. It affects their normal activity. Yes. Now we are talking mm -hmm. about a disorder. Because somebody will say, ah, I have anxiety. I already have an anxiety disorder. No. Six months of anxiety symptom puts you as there's diagnostic criteria actually puts you at that diagnosis of a disorder. It has to affect, impact your life negatively for you to say it's a disorder. So okay. back to anxiety and depression, we already mentioned how it can. Yes. So now for people with sleep issue. On the other side, you've not had a good sleep. You yes. got to work. Your boss is shouting you down. This person wants you to do this. That person, wants, before you know it, it sets up that anxiety cascade in you. Yes. Several times we've seen young people with high demands at work. At the point of, in fact, some people have had complete mental breakdown. So, you know, all of those things, having um, targets that are really not... Realistic. Do you understand? <laughs> the target sometimes, you, yeah. can't, you, you, are, you can't be a superhuman. It's yes. not possible. Do you understand? Mm. So people like that now, because of the stress at work, they're unable to sleep. Do you understand? So people have their beds next to their, to their laptops. Yes. We'll still talk about that. Yes. Once they get to sleep hygiene, it's actually very, very wrong. Your beds, your sleep space is completely or should be completely different from your workspace. Of course. You know, so that's the other you know, side of the divide. I agree. Yes. Okay, so... I, I want us to talk about myths now. Okay. You know, so I know, let me use myself, uh, myself as an example. So I probably, maybe because of work, I probably skip breakfast. 
because I have early meetings. And when it will, when it will be getting towards um, 10 to 12-ish, I now feel hungry. And with that kind of hunger, hmm. I began Grab cook. download it. Not even cook. Cook is to wash it down after mm -hmm. the downloading. Mm -hmm. Yes. So after downloading it, I'll now come back to my desk. And baby girl wants to sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> what's the relationship between, right. between eating and falling asleep almost okay. immediately or within that um, period that you just ate? Okay. So just before I take that, I need yeah. to mention the fact that your breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yes. Oh, if you have agreed. breakfast, it sets your day at a particular tone. You don't yes. have any reasons to snack out. Yes. And you don't have any reason to consume to all those toxic things. Yes. yes. So now back to it is actually not a meat, it's a physiological process. Okay. So when you eat, blood diverts from the brain to digest your food. So at the time that the blood supply to your brain is coming to the tummy to do the work. The brain is coming down. So it's a natural, it's a physiological thing. So you just have to just be <laughs> so, sleep. Just but the sleep. other thing you need to also do is to okay. eat light. What you need. Yes. A number of times we overeat. Yes. So let quantity me give you another quality. interesting thing about overeating. <laughs> okay. Your body would only take what the body needs at any point in time. Every other thing is stored oh. as fat. <sighs> You have taken that your food. You now added a bottle of coke with 42 cubes of sugar. Oh, Jesus. Now we're just starting our story, right? <laughs> so we actually have a lot of unhealthy practices. Yes, yes. Even if we yes. say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, we are not saying carry a bowl of breakfast. What are you now eating for the breakfast? You will eat normal food. Normal food. In lifestyle medicine, we say take whole food plant-based diet. What's the, what does that mean? If I'm taking mm. carbohydrates, I'm taking yam, I'm taking potato, I'm not going for the refined sugars. Okay. I'm not going for the canned food. I'm not going for the fast food. Okay. I'm not going for Indomie. Mm. So we are saying, let's go back to the roots. You know, the roots, yes, that's where the work, the, the mm. real thing is. So that way, when you take complex carbohydrates, it gives your body some time to do the digestion. So what the simple sugars do is that they give you quick energy. Okay. But the quick energy is not what your body needs. Yeah. Because in trying to break down the complex carbohydrates, you're burning calories. Mm. We even say that it is better to chew your fruits than to do smoothies. Blend it. Because right. as you are mm. chewing, you are burning calories. So really, in that regard, it is a normal physiology process, like I said. It is a normal thing. So However, it's not a myth. eat it's, your it's proper fact. food. Don't overeat. When you overeat, your head becomes foggy. Right quantity yes, and right yes. class of quality, food. Yes, quantity, quantity. Very mm. important. Okay. Yeah. Are there other myths? You can yes. share. So some people would say sleep is, for, sleep is for the weak. I hope that moving forward after this our discussion, we'll realize that sleep is not for the weak. It's for the strong. Sleep, <laughs> if you think sleep is for the weak, try the price of chronic not medical sleeping. conditions. Hypertension, diabetes, obesity, hmm. you know, cancers. I'm sure you don't want to have a board with those people. Yeah. You better go to bed and get that sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another one. There's okay. some people who say, ah, so if you say people should, I'd rather rather just sleep for seven hours. That is me sleeping my entire life. No. But that's sleep seven hours week. though. No, but the truth is I give you a practical example. A lot of people feel it is too much. You're sleeping at 10, you're waking up at 5. That is seven hours. Okay. Ask me what we do between 10 and 5. Most times we're on social media. Doing what? Wasting time. Hmm. So really, it is about time we look into our schedules and start adopting the right ways of life. Okay. Knowledge is key. Okay. Seek for knowledge. I mean, it would interest you to know that Society of Life, Lifestyle Medicine is not just for doctors. You can join. Hmm. It gives you the information you need to forge yes, ahead in life. Yes, because this, this podcast, I mean, it's, hmm. it's packed with a lot of information. Hmm. So we hear you. We hear you, doctor. We hear you loud and clear. <laughs> But we want to ask, yes. before we just wrap, wrap up this um, episode, what about those people that do not have the ability to, uh, would I say the ability now? What's the word I'm looking for? Those people that cannot, they want to sleep, but they cannot. Mm -hmm. Let's, for, for instance, the nursing mothers. Mm. You have a baby. I have a baby. Mm. I wake up countless times in the middle of the night. Mm. I mean, and once you interrupt my sleep, the end of it. Back. Yes. So what, what would you say for All those right. people that do not have, um, they don't have power over not sleeping? So the truth is having power over not sleeping is a relative term. Sleep is one of life's gifts to mankind. Okay. So it means that we were all given that power. 
So what took that power away from us? That's the question. Okay. There's something we talk about in lifestyle medicine. Sleep generally, we said something, you know, I said I was going to talk about sleep hygiene. Yes. We're going to look at each of these practices and you and I will see where we come in. Okay. So we say sleep at about a particular time every day. So if your bedtime is 10, 10 is for 10. If you get up and if you go to bed and you're lying in bed for 30 minutes, sleep is not coming. Come out and do something boring. That is because when you stay back in bed, your brain is going to register bed with anxiety, okay. with sleeplessness, with restlessness. Okay. So we say after 30 minutes, sleep is not coming. Come out. Don't take stimulants before bedtime. Mm. Coffee, Coke, Lipton. Um, some people take cola. Mm. Because all those things tell your body it is time to rest. We don't, you don't need to sleep. Then we also say that people should try, as much as we advise that people should exercise, we okay. still don't exercise when it is three hours to bedtime. Because okay. exercise, beyond giving you the happy starts, hormone, yeah. also gives you adrenaline. You're pumping, you're ready to work, you're energized. Then there's something else a lot of people do as well. We use our phones on the bed. No, your bedroom is for sleep and sleep. Let me tell you what happens when you use your phone in bed. Ah. There is a the blue small, light. Small. Let, me tell, let me tell you, I have to dish it to you now, says, you know. So there's the blue light that comes from phones. Oh. Your sleep hormone, which is called melatonin, is produced in the dark. Okay. So when you do all of those light, light things, it inhibits the production of melatonin. Oh. So somebody who wants to go to bed, as is time you want to catch up on chats, catch up on Instagram, catch up on this. And you're saying you're not sleeping. How would you sleep? Because you personally, you're using your personal attitude to inhibit the production of the sleep hormone. Okay. And also we say your room should be as dark as possible. So people say, I cannot sleep in the darkness. I need to have some light. The physiological thing, like I said, is that melatonin, the sleep hormone, is produced in the dark. However, yes. even if you don't want the dark dark, we say dim light. Dim light. Your workspace should be different from your bedroom. If you have your gadgets in your room and all you do is just to move from bed to the move from laptop to the bed, it is not good for you. Even if you've been going going doing it and you've been going, you know, it's been going well, a time would come you have very, very severe difficulty with sleeping. You know, these are some of the things we talk about. Okay. Maybe when we get to the other as we'll still talk about meditation, role of meditation okay. and um, mindfulness. So how will nursing sleeping. mothers? Yes, deal for with nursing mothers. Own? I, I need to tell you that at that period is a lot of challenge. Yeah. You need a lot of support system. Mm -hmm. It is your support system that will help you feed that baby when the baby is, is um, awake. So you you express, if you're still doing exclusive, you would have expressed in the night. Okay. So when the baby wakes up, your support system helps you. So the baby sleeps with the support system. Okay. But I know that the first six months can be very challenging okay. when the baby is really unexclusive. So support, but support system, system is the way. Yes, okay. and time management as well. Okay. Thank you very much. We've come to the end of this episode about myths. So please, eating and falling asleep is not me too. It's you that you know do what you're supposed to do. So don't come for us. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Badmos for this interesting episode. Okay. Please don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share, and listen to us. Follow us on YouTube, follow us on Spotify at synlabnigeria.com. Yes. And drop a comment, please. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back. 